Well, folks, we're back with the Bondathon, and we're with our good old friends, Activision. Quantum of Solace. Now, just a little preamble here. Quantum of Solace, not my favorite James Bond movie. It's, it's not a favorite of a lot of people. The game, however, of Quantum of Solace is really a unique specimen in the James Bond video game library. Uh, there's really nothing quite like it, so let's just start it up and, and I'll give my initial impressions. It's been a long time since I've played this one. Ooh, look, there's my girl Vesper in the bottom. Yeah, I love you, Vesper. Let's just get this out of the way. Quantum of Solace is not really a Quantum of Solace game. It's like half that. It's actually 50% uh, Casino Royale. Since Casino Royale had no video game at the time because there was kind of a holdover from when EA lost the license when Activision got it, uh, Activision actually had to do some like little things because Casino Royale was such a huge mega hit, it had to sort of salvage that popularity, put in Quantum of Solace, because there just isn't enough action in the movie of Quantum of Solace. Like, there's really quick little levels, so they decided to do a little neat thing where they put some Casino Royale levels in there. Like, this is one, the shanty town, the construction site, and a few others are, are sort of in this game. There's 15 main missions overall, which is a pretty decent length. So let's just start at White's estate. Hello? Mr. White? Yes, who's this? Shabams! Get fuck, boy! So Mr. White just went down, and if any of you guys saw the movie, this is just how Casino Royale ends with this kind of scene. And it launches right into a pretty decent opening level. I'm sitting, Mr. Bond. And he's like, oh no, oh, I'm gonna take my Daniel Craig face and get the fuck out of here. Oh. All right, so we're gonna be starting this kind of hedge maze level, which is kind of neat. You could see this in the movies, but they never really explored this whole area that much. All right, so the first thing you notice is this game came out in, I think, 2008. It looks pretty decent uh, for 360 early PS3 game. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. I really like the HUD there of uh, James uh, in the bottom corner, letting you know when you're crouched or not. And this is where the weird parts, not necessarily bad, but the weird parts of Quantum Solace come in. Whenever you go into cover, you go into third person, which has a bunch of awkward moments in the game where, where this doesn't maybe work as intended or as the developers thought they would, Treyarch uh, for this edition and uh, Beanox for the Wii version. Bam, 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 spam. One of the main things about this game that Activision told the entire world, anyone that would listen, uh, that this uses the Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare engine, like the original one. Um, and you know what? I'm okay with that. I would, would I have rather like them made the entire James Bond game from scratch? Sure, of course. Who would not want that if they really enjoy a certain franchise? But, I mean, it makes sense. It's cost-effective for a movie. Um, and you know what? It actually leads to a lot of interesting scenarios and a few gameplay hooks. That makes sense for game James Bond. Uh, and, and it carries over from Call of Duty to James Bond pretty nice. I don't know about aiming down the sights though, and you can you can see the Call of Duty roots by just this fucking machine gun. Oh my god, this is the most Call of Duty shit ever. I mean, I guess it's fine. I can't really blame Activision for using something that works. It's it's not really my place to say they were the guys that were making all the big business decisions. One of the neat things about Quantum of Solace, though, and, you know, not really Call of Duty, is that you have these little unlocking scenarios, which are actually pretty fun. Uh, you just match up the, uh, right there on the D-pad, up, up 7-7. Seven, seven. It should be 007, but that's fine. And, of course, since this is the first level of the game, they're not too hard. Uh, but they get harder. Oh, jeez! Oh, no, you guys, hold on, hold on, I'm coming. Click, all right, BAMS! Shabams, QTs. Uh, you know, it's fine. The camera cutaways from going from third person to first person, a little jarring, I have to say. Now, that was pretty awesome. I enjoyed that immensely. Kind of, I'm, I'm at half chub right now from that. You know, that's kind of par for the course of the Activision game. Since they really took their cues from the movies, uh, the Daniel Craig one specifically, 
they really went for a more realistic approach, and it's not quite as over the top as the previous games that we play in the Bondathon. And and I'm fine with that. They they need to emulate the movies, and that's what the movie people wanted them to do, and they did it. So now the main thing about the Daniel Craig movies and their video game adaptations is that the only real gadget you ever get is basically James Bond's super difty MI6 cell phone. Uh, it's pretty much in all the Daniel Craig games or some sort of variation, and they basically let you hack, look at your map and objectives, and that's pretty much it. Gun and radio. Not exactly Christmas, is it? Were you expecting an exploding pen? If we use our eagle ears, we can hear the one collectible that's in Quantum of Solace. These cell phones that people just leave haphazardly around. Um, it basically just gives you a little intel, a little flavor text. When you're in cover here, they really took the time to model that fucking Daniel Craig brow. You know, the well, there he is. There's that Daniel Craig brow. You love it. Oh, man, I just eat my food off it. Just off his glistening forehead. I just eat Dame Judi Dench's fish and chips. Yeah, I didn't even do that. My James Bond Musk must have done that. Got this little dude, dude man over here. Fucking eat shit. Oh, right into the thank you. Uh, little touches like that I enjoy. They make me think of James Bond dudes falling off stuff, breaking into other stuff so I can get into the stuff. Ah, oh, it's not the Frenzy shotgun, which I was getting so used to. But it's a shotgun fucking nonetheless. Let's see how this works out. BAMS! Okay, it's a pretty decent shotgun. Oh jeez, this castle's just keeping blood in barrels. I don't know that the English do this. Do you guys do this? Do you keep blood in barrels? I don't... Are we in France? Maybe? France probably definitely keeps blood in barrels. Fuck you! Oh god! James, you would look so stupid if all those pots fucking hit you in the head and knocked you out cold. All right, I think James. Yeah, hi Daniel Craig. Hello. You're a dreamboat. I love you. Anyway, let's forge on ahead. Hmm. Yeah, can we? Can we? Will this work? No. Oh. Oh. What? Why do you guys have an aquarium with no water? All right, I got Zach next to me. Zach is making some noises, so if you hear any little kitty noises, that's not me just fawning over Daniel Craig. That's because you know what I can do with my little finger. That's just Zach also fawning over Daniel Craig. He's like, oh, I wish Daniel Craig was my master. He give me fucking fancy feast. Zach doesn't get fancy feast. All right, so now we're gonna use our James Bond hacking sense to hack. I don't. James isn't even holding his phone right now, so I don't. Know. He's downloading all the all these guys' fucking porn torrents, I guess. Uh oh, no! Oh! Oh! Oh, jeez! Oh! What the? Can't let White escape. Can't let old Whitey get the better of us. Yeah, I somehow did it. <laughs> Fuck you, Gully Gully. Okay, so one of the things that kind of bothers me about the Activision James Bond games is that since they were trying so close to emulate uh, the Daniel Craig movies, you get this really uninspired visual design for all the menus and for a lot of the cutscenes and almost all of them. And in the James Bond movies, you only see them like once or twice when M or James is working on a computer or just giving a really brief mission briefing. But in the games, you see them an awful lot and they just kind of get boring after a while. The GoldenEye remake does. I also think even 007 Legends has it. And I'm just not a fan of it from a visual art standpoint. You're just basically staring at these menus on a world map. It's also really similar to Call of Duty in that sense, since a lot of the Call of Duty games had these types of cutscenes, which are fine for them, but for like kind of a movie based game where there's lots of, you know, identifiable characters, you kind of wish for actual in game cutscenes where characters are talking and 
having some dialogue, but this is kind of this bland sort of text descriptions, which I'm not really a fan of. So you got all these dead goobers laying in the sewer water, James Bond's handiwork. Uh, you can't, you can actually interact with them a little bit, just spread their legs, fucking shoot them in the dick a little bit. Oh, that was kind of weird. But, um... You know, the game's not perfect, visually, certainly. It, it feels fun to shoot guys, and, and everything's responsive. But, going from all the games we've played thus far, doesn't it feel... It feels like a little bit of a step back, actually. Um... Wait, oh no, but I thought I could do a Bond moment with her! I could have had a Bond moment, oh... Alright, you know, the game... It, it looks fine in a lot of instances, but some animations, you see what I'm talking about for the awkwardness of third person, it wasn't really built for it. James like, no, I don't, oh, no, don't, no. Now the whole world's gonna know that you don't scratch your fucking balls. <laughs> We're in the kind of guts of this uh, opera house. Uh, just in the inner workings of the sort of place, which I really like. It's a unique sort of environment to sort of have. I have to silently take down this fucking asshole. Let's silently. Remember, kids, always make love to opera music. All right, James making another stylish as fuck entrance so we have now whoa we have now gone fully into a casino royale mission because we're chasing that stupid parkour guy you know the one so this of course is one of those sequences when activision was making this game they were just like oh we need to do this right we really need to get this in here but it also lends itself to being kind of a disjointed narrative when you jump around from quantum of solace back to Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace again, then Casino Royale, it kind of makes the game feel a little haphazard, like, what am I playing here? And it gets a little bit confusing, especially if you haven't watched the movies. If you haven't watched any of them, like, you're going to be kind of in the dark about what the fuck is going on. So this is one of the uh, more memorable levels of Quantum of Solace, this really moody sniper sequence. And what you basically just need to do is take care of all everyone on this building. Uh, and they have these really nice line effects when they do the patrols. You can see their shadows go by. Suck it in, James. There you go. One more to your right. That's all of them. So something weird, and it shows just, you know, a little bit of unpolished here and there, is that if you look at my gun and hand texture, they're on the sort of principle that the rain is still hitting me from outside. Even though I'm inside, you can see my hand just fluttering with weird rainy textures. It's meant to be out here only. Uh, you can see it kind of really reacting now, but once you go back inside here, eh, it's just kind of there, which is fine, I suppose. Okay, be careful here, James. You don't want everyone to see your big, fat, lumbering British ass. Now, I, I always forget the name of this game, but there's this NES game that uses this mechanic of not getting... Everyone can see me there. That was embarrassing. There's an NES game I remember that was like part sniper game, part stealth, and it had a sequence a lot like that, so it always makes me think of it. Uh, here's our first interactions with the fabulously Russian Olga Kurilenko. Uh, she was kind of saddled with a pretty pissy role in... Um, Quantum Asalis. It wasn't very nice. You weren't supposed to shoot her. Well, I missed. So, we just took out another guy, and now we're in the Science Center in Miami. And the other thing about Quantum Asalis that you'll know after a while is that you never really gain anything new. You never get any new gadgets. You never get any new moves or any sort of abilities. It's just kind of very straightforward. And I think that's my main problem with the whole thing, is while it all feels good to shoot guys, and the gunplay is, is generally really fun, um, you never really get any sort of sense of progression. And like I've mentioned before, I think that's because it was modeled after the uh, Daniel Craig movies, which I find actually make them less enjoyable to play as video games. You kind of want some over-the-top fun and, and, and silly things like that. 
Um, and it, it kind of lacks that in that way. And and compared to all the other James Bond games we've played in the Bondathon so far, it's just it does nothing really that special or or that you know video gamey. Wow, System Link, awesome! Download some new maps. Let's go on Xbox Live and check this out. There's a Merrimack's party. Find a game. Bond versus Bond Evasion. Bond Dorm Invasion. Golden Gun Territory Control. Classic. Team Conflict. Team Conflict. Conflict. Teamwork Mayhem. Play Golden Gun Classic and Conflict. How about we just play Bond versus? I'm going to vote to skip. Yep. Yeah. All right. Go back to waiting for someone to join my game. So you guys can see it has no local multiplayer, only online. And for a game that's from like 2008, uh, the multiplayer is essentially useless unless you get some friends with the game as well uh, and play that way. Uh, there is no split screen at all, which is kind of a bummer. So Quantum of Solace, I, I guess this kind of wraps this game up. Um, it, there's really not much to say about it. It's a competent first-person shooter with kind of these these weird third-person hybrid elements. And much like Quantum of Solace, the movie, it's not that memorable. It really just comes down to the, the fact that it still plays like a very sort of generic first-person shooter. It's not bad, but at the time, it, it was really nothing special. And going back to it, I think it you know holds up as a decent little action game. In terms of rating it, I'd say I'd give it, as an overall game, the way it works, the way it plays, 3.5 smashed Daniel Craig nuts out of 5. As a James Bond game, well, this is kind of difficult to sort of place it because it emulates the Daniel Craig realism really, really accurately. So the only way I can really rate it is towards that. I can't really put it against the Pierce Brosnan stuff or even the, the, the earlier James Bonds. But in terms of Bond factor, four smash Daniel Craig nuts out of five? Like I said, it's really kind of hard to place this one, but it's not my favorite James Bond game, but considering it's Activision, a name we all love and trust, their first entry into the franchise, they certainly cut some corners by just reusing uh, an engine and kind of just, you know, hodgepodging Casino Royale and Quantum Solace together. But still, as their first go, it's a pretty decent effort, just not that memorable of a game.